All right, music fans, welcome. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for some real people just like you and just like me. Also doing real videos without a script, ladies and gentlemen. That's another thing that I don't typically say. Um, by the way, here is Lone Rider um, and Sundown. I've been promoting the crap out of this and it deserves it. Um, I've got patrons on the uh, Patreon page of this channel who have thanked me and who can't stop listening to Lone Rider featuring the incredible vocals of Steve Overland, the um, very distinctive drums of Simon Kirk from Bad Company, uh, Chris Childs playing bass and uh, Steve Morris on guitar. This is phenomenal. And you should pick up a copy, a physical copy from our friends over at Escape Music. The president over there, Khalil Turk, tells me all the time that he's just not selling products. And it's really sad that um, the melodic rock business, the industry itself is really struggling. And with material like this, there's really no excuse for that other than the fact that streaming is the dominant thing and it just doesn't pay. And I agree with the artists that something needs to be done about streaming revenue, but having a physical copy of something is really cool as well. Uh, you know what else is really cool? The fact that Foreigner continues and some people are upset, you know, uh, no original members except for Mick Jones, who goes out there for like 45 minutes. Um, you know, we've heard some things about Mick Jones as far as his physical health and that he's not doing well. Then we heard from, I think, Jeff Pilson last month debunking that and saying that Mick Jones is doing great. Um, keep in mind, people, all right? There's a lot at stake when a band goes out on the road, they pay a whole bunch of people to, to you know, be part of their team, whether it's the concessions people, the road crew, the merch people, um, the roadies themselves, you know, who are setting up stuff um, and the band, obviously. And when you hear some bad publicity, like, oh, that Kelly Hansen, he just, you know, he's a cheap imitation of Lou Graham. And you can agree with that, but you can also agree with the fact that he's pretty good, right? He is a pretty good singer and has been out there for like 17 years. And all of a sudden now um, you've got some criticism uh, through the interviews and Lou Graham spouting off. And Lou Graham can say whatever he wants. He's earned the right to be upset about the situation. But, you know, a couple of years ago, he said, hey, I'm going to retire. So do you continue Foreigner without Lou, which they have been doing anyway? And the other aspect uh, to all of this is that Lou rejoined Foreigner for some shows a few years back. And Everybody seemed to be getting along great. You know, that was the mood back in those days. Hey, this worked out well, unless if people were pretending, right? Because <clears throat> later on, we hear that, you know, Kelly Hansen was yapping too much on stage and Lou wasn't able to um, get his uh, two cents in to talk to the audience or whatever. All right. Well, in any event, Foreigner appears to be continuing, according to Jeff Pilsen, who did an interview with a radio station called the Eagle, KKGL. Don't know where that is. It's got to be what? West of the Mississippi, though, because of the call letters. Um, Jeff Pilsen says our body parts seem to be holding together. So, yeah, let's keep playing. We're kind of firing on all cylinders. So let's just keep rocking. The question is, will these guys continue? And you got to give the radio station, the interviewer, some credit for actually asking an interesting question. Um, look, Foreigner is charging way too much for tickets to these shows. Uh, you can make the argument, yeah, they sound great but they're not the original band. And I think they should factor that in to what they charge, right? Because, you know, a great foreigner tribute band could come along with a singer who is a dead ringer for Lou Graham 
and you can go there, close your eyes. You don't have to look at anybody on stage. I mean, you probably will, but the point is you use your ears and you determine, hey, these guys sound a lot like Foreigner, right? And so the current band, yeah, they sound a lot like Foreigner. And you've got almost a whole generation of people now who don't know who Lou Graham is. I hate to say it, it's tragic, right? They just say, hey, I like Foreigner. I'm going to go see Foreigner. Now, I tried um, to look up just what the tickets would cost because they're they're going to be like down the road from where I live. And that doesn't happen too often for me because I hate to travel. I hate to go two hours to a concert. And then the concert gets over at 1030 at night and you're getting home at like, you know, one o'clock in the morning and you're exhausted and you're white knuckled from trying to stay awake driving. You know, even if it is highway driving, it's still like seriously, you know, and then you don't fall asleep right away because your adrenaline has been you know, going for the entire drive back. And that's just the way I am. You know, I'm getting to be kind of a curmudgeon, people. Um, <clears throat> if the band ain't like down the road, I'm probably not going to go see it just the way I am. Even when I was a teenager, I didn't have to go that far for concerts, right? But geographically where I am, you know, I'm not near Orlando. I'm not really near Tampa. I'm definitely not near Miami. Although I'm kind of equidistant from those places, Orlando probably being the furthest place away in any event um it would have been cool to go see foreigner and to kind of do a review of you know kelly hansen versus lou graham do they still sound good um did mick jones come out on stage how long did he play for i could time it out and say you know mick jones was only out there for 38 minutes you know i spent good money on these tickets and you know, to me, I don't even know if that's a factor anymore, right? It's just, do these guys sound good? Do they represent the music well? And with Foreigner, according to Jeff Pilsen, the music, get this, this is an interesting quote. The music is so strong that I think it really can be delivered by somebody that's not the original members. So he's making the point, and it's an interesting point that the music is almost more important than who's playing it. Really good quote, actually. And I've never said it that way. But if your catalog is so good, that's why you've got tribute bands out there. Rumors of Fleetwood Mac, who are insanely good at being Fleetwood Mac. Um, the drummer told me, right? He said, hey, we're kind of like the next generation of Fleetwood Mac. And I was like, whoa, that's kind of a, big claim to make and you know <laughs> i don't know how mick fleetwood feels about that but apparently he wholeheartedly endorses rumors of fleetwood mac even to have of fleetwood mac in their name is a little bit dicey you know i mean it's not like you could call the band tango in the night right would be a great name for it you know or mirage i know there was a fleetwood mac tribute called mirage um, with Foreigner, you know, you could take a, a song title, Head Games or something. I mean, you could do um, a tribute like that. And I think people would show up for it if it was authentic. And honestly, the geezer rock community, which I am a proud member of, um, we're all sitting here going, yeah, just deliver the music. And that's what Jeff Pilsen is saying here. Uh, it can be delivered by somebody else because the music is that good? He goes on to say, I mean, listen, we deliver a really strong set. We are fans. We love the music. We love doing the best job we possibly can. Now, that's interesting, too, because I've seen a lot of bands go through the motions, uh, original bands, bands with, you know, a few original guys, and they're kind of going through the motions. They're not all that excited about playing the same songs over and over again. And it's good to hear that Jeff Pilsen and Foreigner, you know, still love what they do uh, and they deliver a great set. And it's almost as if they go out there on stage saying, look, we're not the original band, we know this. So we really have to put forth our best effort. And I think they do. 
He goes on to say, so even when it's not the original band, it's done with the authority and the belief that you can deliver it. And he goes on to talk about Arnel Pineda from Journey, saying he's a fabulous singer, right? Almost saying, hey, you know what? I know Kelly Hansen has been taking some, you know, some some friendly fire, <laughs> maybe some not so friendly fire from folks. Um, and you could say, you know, hey, he, he doesn't represent the band the way Lou Graham did. Lou Graham just went out there and did his job and was a great singer. You know, Kelly Hansen's trying to be Steven Tyler. He's trying to be a more dramatic front man, uh, a little bit more engaging and so forth, whereas Lou just was a more no-nonsense guy as the front man. And that tension between those two styles shows up when people, you know, do interviews. They they just go, oh, this guy just yaps too much. He's, he's um you know, almost like a salesman out there. He's a little, little too aggressive in his sales techniques. We all have had that salesperson, whether it was at your front door or at the car dealership where you're like, dude, I know what I want. I know what I don't want. All right. Just help me find what I want and get out of my face. Right. And so a lot of people look at lead singers like that and they say, you know what, just deliver the songs and stop being, you know, I don't know, Wayne Newton or whatever, you know, stop, stop trying to kind of be the maitre d, just play the songs. Um, you don't have to do anything else. Um, but some people just like the entertainment value of it. Um, Peter Cetera became this entertainer later in his career. Early on, I think he was just barely trying to get through the songs. You know, I think he was more timid, but then he evolved into somebody who became a bit of a showman, right? And I think audiences really loved that. Um, Arnel Pineda, they mentioned him here. He's this great front man. He runs around like a lunatic. Steve Perry did some of that, but not to the degree that Arnell did it. And when Soto was in the band, Jeff Scott Soto, he was another guy. Roamed around on stage like he owned the place, you know, commanded the place. Um, was kind of like a, a towering, he's kind of a tall guy and he had, you know, he still has the hair and everything. He's kind of like, I don't know, I was going to say the Greek God, but he's from Puerto Rico. So that doesn't really work. But in any event, people like that. And I think Kelly Hansen delivers some of that. Although some people would say, man, just get up there and play the songs. And I think you have to do a little bit of both, you know, I don't know. I mean, my guess is certain people in the audience are like, this is cheesy. He needs to shut up. And other members of the audience are like, ooh, he's entertaining. He's engaging. Um, he's really into this. And I think that enthusiasm sometimes gets transferred to the audience. The audience picks up on it and gets more involved. Now, Pilsen goes on to say, I think when you're respecting the music, doing it in a way that people want to hear it, there you go, and doing it with that high energy performance, you can't go wrong. And he talks about bands like Journey Sticks without Dennis DeYoung, which isn't, see, Dennis is still around. That's my point with him. Um, but you know what? I'll, I'll give Sticks credit. They go out there and they do the best job they can with the people that they have. I would say they need a new keyboard player, one that sounds like Dennis DeYoung, right? If you're not going to have Dennis, um, get a Kelly Hansen. You know what I'm saying? Get somebody who kind of sounds like the original guy. Kevin Cronin, obviously still part of REO. They mentioned REO Speedwagon here. Um, Kevin does a pretty good job. There are times where his pacing and his phrasing, I think, isn't as sharp and clean as it used to be. A long time ago, a long time ago, but I think that's the only complaint I have about Kevin Cronin right now. So anyway, um, the article goes on to talk about how Lou Graham was the voice of Foreigner and uh, how you know Lou Graham left the band in 2002. I think he was fired from the band technically, so I think that's important. I think again, maybe Foreigner could have waited around a little bit, but. You know, Mick Jones, he basically built a new foreigner almost from the ground up. And uh, I think he succeeded. Originally, they had Jason Bonham playing drums. And I really 
thought he was great in that band. Um, but Jason obviously moved on and is now Jason just wanted Led Zeppelin to get back together again so he could do that. But he's been with Sammy Hagar for a number of years. So um, you can't fault him for being a part of the circle with Sammy Hagar. Um, in any event, people, that's um, that's the topic here. One more time, though, on Lone Rider because it's so good, right? So again, if you're a fan of Foreigner, by the way, you would enjoy Lone Rider for sure. But this is old school bad company with a bit of a modern flavor to it. But really what's great about this recording is the way it was done. You can, you can feel kind of the warmth within it, the sincerity within it. It's not cold and digital. And like everybody just recorded their parts in different places. The production value is super high. For instance, compared to Journey's Freedom album, this thing is like Dark Side of the Moon as far as production value. So again, it doesn't sound like Dark Side of the Moon musically, but I'm just saying it, it's really well produced. So that's Escape Music, by the way. All of their stuff, excellent production value. They don't put out as much music, but when they do, it's almost guaranteed to sound amazing. They have a project coming out called Turkish Delight, which is going to be almost like the best melodic rock album you've ever heard because there are a number of different people performing on it. And I've heard some of it and um, pretty spectacular. So you can look forward to that as well. All right. Definitely over time on this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Patreon for dollar a month. Uh, if you can afford it, good conversations over there. If you have questions or anything, you can send them over there. Thanks again, and I will see you soon.